Shabbat Shalom and hello everyone. I hope everyone is having a very restful Sabbath. Restful, that's that's what Sabbath is for, to rest. To rest. As usual, I will quote the Shema, Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 4. I'm trying to remember that. I'm learning to say it in Hebrew, but I'm not doing that today because I'm not quite there yet. Not quite. So, here we go. Hear, O Israel, Yahweh, our Elohim. Yahweh is one, and we will love Yahweh, our Elohim, with all of our heart, with all of our being, and with all of our might. We shall. Reminders. Everyone needs a reminder. I have my reminder clipped to me currently, and getting them unclipped is more difficult than getting them clipped for sure. Reminder. Oh, camera's on that side. That is... Aziti. And it even says in what people consider the New Testament that Yeshua himself wore them. So if he did it, why why aren't we? Coffee. Alright, so we left off in uh, <clears throat> Exodus chapter 6. Yeah, that's where we left off, right? Yeah. Yeah, that was it. I read chapter 6 last. Um, I had to confer because my, re my personal readings are farther along. Um, anyway, chapter 6, we were basically going over some names. <laughs> the father was telling Moshe what he was going to do. And in chapter 7, we are going to get started with what he is going to do. Uh, the father in verse 30 of chapter 6 had said, And Moshe or is, told, is telling him, I am Yahweh, speak to Pharaoh, sovereign of Mitzrayim, all that I say to you. And Moshe said before Yahweh, See, I am of uncircumcised lips. Why would Pharaoh listen to me? So, chapter 7, let's get right into it. Because, yeah. <clears throat> So Yahweh said to Moshe, See, I have made you an Elohim to Pharaoh, and Aaron, your brother, is your prophet. And Elohim has been used for other terms in here, or other people, not terms. But um, definitely, I've gone over the definition before and how it is used. So yeah, go back if you haven't heard so. Anyway, it's lowercase Elohim as when it's talking about the Father, even in everything it says about the father is in capital if it's he talking about him capital if it's re if it's you know him saying me it's capital m um if it says elohim referring to him it's capital e and here we see a lower case e so yeah i'll just shut up and read you shall speak all that i command you and aaron your brother shall speak to pharaoh to let the children of israel go out of this land but I am going to harden the heart of Pharaoh and shall increase my signs, capital M, my signs, and my wonders in the land of Mitzrayim. And Pharaoh is not going to listen to you. And I shall lay my hand on Mitzrayim and bring my division and my people, the children of Israel, out of the land of Mitzrayim by great judgments. And the Mitzrayites shall know that I am Yahweh when I scratch out my hand on Mitzrayim and I shall bring the children of Israel out from among them and Moshe and Aaron did as Yahweh commanded so they did now Moshe was 80 years old and Aaron 83 years old when they spoke to Pharaoh and Yahweh spoke to Moshe and to Aaron saying when Pharaoh speaks to you saying show a miracle for yourselves then you shall say to Aaron take your rod and throw it before Pharaoh and let it become a serpent so Moshe and Aaron went into Pharaoh and they did not and they did so as Yahweh commanded and Aaron threw his rod before Pharaoh and before his servants and it became a serpent but Pharaoh also called the wise men and the practicers of witchcraft and they the magicians of Mitzrayim also did so with their magic and they each one threw down his rod and they became serpents but the rod of Aaron swallowed up their rods 
And Pharaoh's heart was strengthened, and he did not listen to them, as Yahweh had said. And Yahweh said to Moshe, The heart of Pharaoh is hard. He refuses to let the people go. Go to Pharaoh in the morning as he goes out to the water, and you shall stand by the river bank to meet him. And take in your hand the rod which was turned into a serpent. And you shall say to him, Yahweh, the Elohim of the Hebrews has sent me to you, saying, Let my people go, so they serve me in the wilderness. But see, until now you have not listened. Thus said Yahweh, By this you know I am Yahweh. See, I am striking the waters which are in the river with the rod that is in my hand, and they shall be turned to blood. <clears throat> and the fish in the river shall die, and the river shall stink, and the Mitzrites, Mitzrites shall find it impossible to drink the water of the river. And Yahweh spoke to Moshe, Say to Aaron, Take your rod and scratch out your hand over the waters of Mitzrayim, over their streams, over their rivers, over their ponds, and over all their pools of water, yet they become blood. And there shall be blood in the land of Mitzrayim, both in wooden and in stone containers. And Moshe and Aaron did so, as Yahweh commanded. And he lifted up the rod and struck the waters that were in the river, in the eyes of Pharaoh, and in the eyes of his servants. And all the waters in the river were turned to blood. And the fish that were in the river died. And the river stank. And the Mitzrayites were unable to drink the water of the river. And the blood was in all the land of Mitzrayim. And the magicians of Mitzrayim did the same with their magic. And the heart of Pharaoh was strengthened, and he did not listen to them, as Yahweh had said. And Pharaoh turned and went into his house, and his heart was not moved by this either. And all the Mitzrayites dug all around the river for water to drink, for they were unable to drink the water from the river. And seven days were completed after Yahweh had struck the river. Seven days, no water. There's a lot to be learned from chapter 7. Has the Father ever hardened your heart, made you not want to do something that you know you should do? Did you do it anyway? Even though you should do it, and even though you did not want to do it, did you do it anyway? Because He wanted you to do it? Just a thought. Going into chapter 8. And Yahweh spoke to Moshe, Go to Pharaoh and say to him, Thus said Yahweh, Let my people go, so that they may serve me. But if you refuse to let them go, see, I am smiting all of your borders with frogs. Frogs. And the river shall swarm with frogs, which shall go up and shall come into your house, and into your bedroom, and on your bed and into the houses of your servants, and on your people, <clears throat> and into your ovens, and into your kneading bowls. Then the frogs shall come up on you, and on your people, and on all of your servants. And Yahweh said to Moshe, Say to Aaron, Scratch out your hand with your rod over the streams, over the rivers, over the ponds, and cause frogs to come up on the land of Mitzrayim. So Aaron scratched out his hand over the waters of Mitzrayim, and the frogs came up and covered the land of Mitzrayim. And the magicians did so with their magic, and brought up frogs on the land of Mitzrayim. These magicians really don't have any common sense. I mean, he's threatening to swarm the entire land with frogs, and they're like, oh, well, we can do that too. So, you know, they're just adding to the problem. Right? I mean, that just, yeah. Anyway, verse 8. Pharaoh then called for Moshe and Aaron and said, Pray to Yahweh to take away the frogs from me and from my people, and I shall let the people go to slaughter go to slaughter to Yahweh. And Moshe said to Pharaoh, Explain yourself to me. When I am to pray for you and for your servants and for your people to destroy the frogs from you and your house and the remain only in the river. So he said, Tomorrow. And he said, 
Let it be according to your word that you know that there is no one like Yahweh, our Elohim. And the frogs said, and the frogs shall turn aside from you, and from your houses, and from your servants, and from your people, and they shall remain in the river only. And Moshe and Aaron went out from Pharaoh, and Moshe cried out to Yahweh concerning the frogs which he had brought against Pharaoh. Capital H. He. And Yahweh did according to the word of Moshe, and the frogs died out of the died out of the houses of of the courtyards and out of the fields, and they gathered them together in heaps, and the land stank. And when Pharaoh saw that there was relief, he hardened his heart and did not listen to them, as Yahweh had said. And Yahweh said to Moshe, Say to Aaron, Stretch out your rod, strike the dust of the land, so that it becomes gnats in all the land of Mitzrayim. And they did so, and Aaron stretched out his hand with the rod and struck the dust of the earth, and it became gnats on man and beast. All the dust of the land became gnats in all the land of Mitzrayim. And the magicians did similarly with their magic to bring forth gnats, but they were unable. And they were gnats on man and beast. That would be highly agitating. The magician said to Pharaoh, this is the finger of Elohim. But the heart of Pharaoh was strengthened, and he did not listen to them, as Yahweh had said. And Yahweh said to Moshe, Rise early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh as he comes out, of the, out to the water, and say to him, Thus said Yahweh, Let my people go, so that they may serve me. Or else, if you do not let my people go, see, I am sending swarms of flies on you and your servants and on your people and into your houses. And the houses of the Mitzrayim shall be filled with swarms of flies, and also the ground which they stand. And in that day I shall separate the land of Goshen, in which my people dwell, that no swarms of flies shall be there, so that you know that I am Yahweh in the midst of the land. And I shall put a ransom between my people and your people. Tomorrow this, sh this sign shall be. And Yahweh did so. And thick swarms of flies came into the houses of Pharaoh and into his servants' houses and into all the land of Mitzrayim. And the land was ruined because of the swarms of flies. Ruined. Sounds like his muffler's ruined. Pharaoh then called for Moshe and Aaron and said, Go slaughter to your Elohim in the land. And Moshe said, It is not right to do so, for we would be slaughtering the abomination of the Mitzrayites to Yahweh, our Elohim. See, if we slaughter the abomination of the Mitzrayites before their eyes, they would, would they not stone us? Let us go three days' journey into the wilderness. Then we shall slaughter to Yahweh, our Elohim, as he commanded us. And Pharaoh said, I am letting you go then. You shall slaughter to Yahweh your Elohim in the wilderness, only do not go very far away. Pray for me. And Moshe said, See, when I leave, when I leave you, I shall pray to Yahweh, and tomorrow the swarms of flies shall depart from Pharaoh, from his servants and from his people. But do not let Pharaoh again deceive, not to let the people go slaughter to Elohim, or to Yahweh. It actually said Yahweh. Yeah. <laughs> And Moshe went out from Pharaoh and prayed to Yahweh. And Yahweh did according to the word of Moshe and removed the swarms of flies from Pharaoh, from his servants and from his people. Not one remained. But Pharaoh hardened his heart at this time too and did not let the people go. Let my people go. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and stop there today just because... I am in need of rest, and I am in need of study. So two chapters is what we were doing. I will attempt to get a couple of more later in this week, just because I will still be doing my uh, Bible study. That will be up on Patreon, and I've been posting it to the Gremlin Pack as well, the members of the channel. <coughs> I will... Uh, have that up on Monday usually I think I haven't missed a Monday yet since I started doing it but hey
this has been yeah it's going to be a restful day it has been a very busy week for me i have been doing things all over the place i haven't really had much time for youtube i haven't but hey getting there getting back to normal scheduling i don't think i've missed my scheduling but i had been doing two day two videos a day and yeah i've just not had time for it for most days a lot going on a lot to think about it says and we will see later in the book thou shall not bear false witness and essentially that's what Pharaoh is doing he's saying yeah I'll let you go if you do this for me I'll let you go oh you did that for me thanks I'm not letting you go and he does that twice. How rude. I'm one of those people that really gets irritated when somebody says they're going to do something and they don't do it. It agitates me greatly. So I don't pretend to understand the feelings of Elohim, our Father, Creator. I don't, but I can see. I keep saying what you're you're going to do something and you're not going to do it. So look what I'm going to do to you, and I'm going to progressively make it worse until you do what you said you were going to do, or until you do what he says you're going to do. So yeah, there are lessons to be learned here. Do what he wants, or he's going to swarm you with flies, or even worse. Later we will see the striking down of all the firstborn, and we will have a very serious discussion. Rather or not, we think our creator is a pacifist. Anyway, Shabbat Shalom everyone. I hope you have a very, very restful Sabbath. I intend to.